call the uh, September meeting of the Open Space Greenways Committee into session. And if we can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, I do the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before uh, we start in with the uh, agenda, I just want to make a real quick announcement that Art Kester called and uh, he won't be here this evening. His wife is recovering from uh, surgery and he has to be with her, so we wish uh, Art and uh, his wife Claire all the best and hope she has a speedy recovery as well. Uh, if you've had a chance to review the uh, minutes of the meeting, uh, move for a call for an action to uh, approve the prior minutes. I move that we approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Are there any revisions to the agenda as presented? If not, we'll proceed. As far as the uh, liaison of the reports is concerned, uh, uh, if you could, uh, Leah is not here tonight, so we will not be talking about the recreation area. So, uh, Wally, could you uh, inform us about any items that are coming up as far as the township is concerned? Nothing to report today. Okay, thank you. As far as the uh, growth seal, Nature and Land Conservancy, Bert? Uh, just repeating from last month, um, there is a program scheduled at the Gibraltar Bay Refuge Unit. Um, this coming Sunday, September 7th, is called Incredible Insects. That is where we'll be presenting a program at 2 p.m. Okay. Well, so Larry is not here tonight, so we'll be no report on the recreation activity. As far as the uh, dump the junk and the wood cutting activity, uh, Woody, I think you're going to be asking for some volunteers for the dump the junk. And uh, yeah. could you the dump the junk is on the 18th and 19th. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. Also the uh, cutting. I would, the place I wanted to cut, I went over to it and went by just where I got here, and uh, doesn't seem like there's much wood over there, but there's a lot of brush and green so it's hard to see through it. So we may have to wait a little while and make sure that uh, we do have, because trees, be, uh, down trees, because I saw a bunch of them last uh, six months ago. But uh, I don't know where they went. Maybe somebody else took them away before, uh, before what it happened. location are you referring to? I'm talking to uh, south of Horse Mill, just south of the Presbyterian Church. Ah, okay. There's a whole bunch yeah. of them sitting in there, all bish mashed all over the place. Yep, they're mm -hmm. gone. Bob, I think they're gone. I think they're gone. Somebody took them out. Yep. I don't know who took them out. A good neighbor. Huh? A good neighbor. No, I don't think it was a good neighbor. But anyway, somebody took them out. So we might be looking for another place. I know of one behind the uh, fire hall, but people would have to cut the trees, stack them, and then bring their vehicles in and pick them up. They can't sit there all day because you got fire department, you got the police department running through there. So you, well, I, the understanding is that they could come and get them, but they can't sit there. So that's up to the, we'll have to make that decision uh, next meeting if we're gonna have it on November 1st. Okay, but it's set in stone for the, the Dr. John for the 18th and the 19th of October. All right. Okay, so uh, what do you be asking for volunteers? Oh, correct. Okay, that be for how many do you need for Saturday? We well, need two people, three people to most. I'll do Saturday. You do Saturday morning or Saturday night or what? Morning. Saturday morning. Yeah, I'm you two guys morning. do Saturday morning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm in town then, so I'll let you know. Okay, well, if you're not, then I'm in town. <laughs> and I'll do Sunday afternoon if nobody else will. Well, what's his name? He usually likes to come. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, I don't know. No, Chuck, Chuck always comes. Oh, but, Chuck uh, always comes. Uh, the Aserat. Aserat. They like to come with uh, okay. the guy, the woman's uh, used to be a member. Husband likes to come. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah, Ingo and Marguerite. Marguerite. Ingo and Marguerite, that's right. Yeah. on Sunday morning, but... So why, but I can skip it that day. Okay. Uh, hey, I'll... Uh, Saturday afternoon? Saturday afternoon I can do. No. Okay. okay, I can do Sunday morning. I'll talk to Hasselhoff and see if I can do Sunday afternoon. Okay, all right. Okay. Now, are we, uh, uh, are we going to be able to do any electronic... Uh, Not this time. Oh, we can't do it this time, okay. Okay. Okay, there's no, no electronics. Okay, okay. no electronics. Okay. All right. Don't know that. Don't believe in electronics. Okay. Or is it a listen to us? They're playing anyway. All right. Okay, as far as anything, is there anything else now as far as dump the junk or the wood cutting? Uh, dump the junk on the uh, batteries. The uh, ends of the nine volt have to be taped. Oh, we want to accept them. Okay. They have to be taped. Okay. I don't want to set no fires. Okay. Now, th does that have to be given? Does that have to be separated? And does that usually go directly to Don and Well, we, we can we have to put it. We they can bring it to us. Okay. And we can put it in there at all. Okay. But they have to be. You can let us know when you're not there where it goes. Yeah, there's, okay. a, there's okay. a blue bill. Okay. Very good. Right there. Okay. Anything else, Woody? That's it. Okay. All right, the next item on the agenda is our discussion about the uh, about the trails. Uh, this is a, a general uh, comment before we get into the details. Uh, there's been a number of instances where uh, people have been using their uh, motorbikes and uh, motorcycles and other off-road vehicles on the open space trails, which has caused a lot of damage. So I've gone to go ahead and I'm going to uh, uh, order six signs which will be posted on each one of the trailheads, uh, which will indicate uh, motorized vehicles uh, are not allowed except for the handicapped. And that, those will be placed on the uh, trail signs. Do you, know, do you think everybody's going to believe it? Well, at least they'll be informed. Yeah, they'll be informed that they'll still do it. We're going to put an article in the paper about that, too. I think it should be enforced if you're talking. I understand that. We can. Still read it right here. Yeah, yeah, we can. And, and also say that if you notice anything happening to call the police, because I had an individual call me and I had to then tell him to call it, please. I, okay, we can do that, but I think the signs will be very helpful in uh, supporting the police efforts to uh, enforce that, that regulation. And as soon as they come in, uh, we'll be putting them up. As far as the wildlife uh, sanctuary is concerned, Pat, anything? Um, Yes, on September the 7th, it's the Lutheran Church, Cliff? Yes. The Lutheran Church has volunteered to come and um, spread mulch on the um, wildlife sanctuary. And I'm also going to take some red bud trees that um, the Garden Club has graciously uh, grown for us to put at the trailhead at the wildlife sanctuary and if the tree signature signs are in by then I will also ask 
the volunteers to put those up. Okay. All right. Are you going to be there on the 7th? I will be there on the 7th. Okay. Was that the October 7th or September 7th? September 7th. Okay. Okay. Okay, as far as the Centennial Farm Trail, uh, Bill? Well, the, um, the trails at Centennial Farm were in pretty good shape, except for uh, going south on the one trail. Uh, a small tractor, a mulching tractor, should be in there and uh, maybe uh, gone through and, you know, the grass and cut there, or the debris. And then um, going west, uh, the trail right at the end, you, uh, you kind of went over that one and we think we should have some mulch dump there. Yeah, about the last 200 yards, that trail is, uh, uh, it's very muddy. So, and there's areas in there that we should, uh, you know, put some mulch to, to burn it up a little bit. But uh, the mulch should be dumped in small quantities right at the beginning of the, uh, the trail there, right behind the gates. We shouldn't, we shouldn't dump any large loads. Okay. So we have to find the, uh, a smaller dump truck and get smaller loads in there. And, and um, we should have a small tractor to get it back in there uh, and not destroy what we already have in the trail. Okay. Having said that, uh, Pat, if the, I think the youth of the, the, the Lutheran Church is going to work on the Manchester, I mean the Manchester, but the Sanctuary Trail, if they want to do some additional volunteer work uh, at a future Sunday, maybe sometime in the fall, and if we can get some mulch dumped at the head of right the, the, head, the, right the gate. At a Centennial Farm, then we can ask them to give us a hand with that. Yes, okay. okay. So you might want to mention that too. Then. Yeah, and, yeah, and I'll sort of mention to them our concept of Friends of the Trails. Yes. To start yeah. pushing that. Sure, okay. right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Way right behind the gates, I think we could leave some of the mulch. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dora. Anything else? That's it. Okay. I don't it. Uh, let me stop right there. Uh, Laura, we passed over your report on the recreation uh, activities. Is there anything you want to tell us about well, the recreation activities? Well, we're without a director at the moment, as everyone knows. No. Until we design and we don't have hired oh. a, a new director. Um, we met last Tuesday at Centennial Farm, so it wasn't televised. Mm -hmm. um, a, you know Gerald Page, P A G E? Well, he's been a secret angel at this playscape on the Congress on the call there. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I mean, I said that it, we haven't had reports of that much vandalism no more. There's nothing to do. There's nothing paper and knock around and so forth. Well, he and a couple of friends have been monitoring that. So we might want to talk to him because he recognizes the two trails there. And it was kind of his opinion. I mean, I just quote him. Yeah. But we there were other trails that probably needed to be expanded and worked on as opposed to those. Surprisingly, lots of people are using the place to escape according to here. Oh. So, I mean, that was a surprise to us. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you. Okay. Um, let's see. There was something else. Oh, lots of, um, a little bit of a hold up on the launch, the non-realized launching. Uh, the bid process got a little moved up between the county and the state and the funds, uh, but it will be taken care of. That's about it, unless you have questions. Uh, uh, just for
concern about the concrete, you know, it's never as smooth as you want. It's going to take a lot of squeegeeing to keep it dry when it's roller skating and same thing with um, in the winter with the ice. Right. So it's going to be roller skating in the summer and ice skating in the winter? That's my best little plan all along here. Yeah. Wow. As far as the, the uh, trail on the playscape is concerned, and that kind of flows into what I want to talk about very briefly, uh, there seems to be some opinion that, uh, that the playscape is going to gradually uh, uh, be dissipated or be moved to the recreation area. Well, we're going, to, we're going to investigate that, try yeah. to get the best location. Okay. Um, you know, that's it, it's extended its life by about nine years so far, doing mm -hmm. maintenance. Okay. So we're at the point where we're looking at, does it make sense to continue to spend that money to maintain, mm -hmm. or should we send, or we should be looking at how do we snap the master plan? Okay. So, I don't want to uh, spend any money on that playscape trail if the playscape itself is going to be moved. Well, there are no immediate plans on that, you know, until the next couple of years. Uh, all right. And I'm going to have, I'm supposed to be in another meeting at 7, so I'm going to cut in about 10 minutes and let you. Do you think the uh, playscape should be moved? I don't really have an opinion on that. I mean, based on what Mr. Page said, if it is being used, um, you know, and uh, there's a lighting issue there. We did discuss about the you know, because I guess it's great fun for young people to you know cut put out the lights that are there, okay. um, you know putting in cameras, etc. It's an expense. Yeah. Stadium lighting, which would be up higher, would be an expense. Yeah. But but that's another thing. If, if the equipment's yeah. not going to last, and we don't want to see that, I think what we excuse me, go ahead, Joan. I didn't see it really used over there. Well, I'm only speaking to what Mr. Page said. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I guess what we're looking for before we, we spend uh, money to upgrade that trail and also to have it included in our upcoming trail guide, I, I think I would like to have some sort of a feeling from the mm -hmm. commission in general, you know, with a little note from uh, Mr. Okay. Catcher, is that his name? The Catcher. Catcher. Well, catcher. Well, Catcher. As far as what the recognition feeling is about uh, spending maybe a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars to upgrade that trail, whether it's a wise thing to do it or whether it's uh, uh, if the trail, if the playscape is going to be eventually relocated or moved is just let it let it go and then remove the trail mm -hmm. identification so mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, the existing landscape cannot be moved. It would have to be disposed of it in a proper landfill. Yeah. But I mean, I think just giving my two cents on this, yeah. the trail and the playscape should be treated separately. Either you, you have a trail on that way or you don't, but having it yeah. related to the playscape, I think, you know, we were talking last time about taking it all the way out to Gozer Parkway. Mm -hmm. And irrespective of the condition or the maintenance or, or the future of the playscape, that seemed to be kind of sensible to me. People like to have, you know, walk in a circle, go to the to the high school and use the track. Mm -hmm. But if you you know if you want to go on a trail or a nature trail, there's some pretty land in that piece. I believe there is some sort of a trail that leads out from the Playscape Trail to a piece of paper. Uh, Gosia Parkway. My, my, only, my only comment was that the base your judgment on whether or not the, the Playscape as it stands okay. will right. you know, have any bearing on it. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll take that into consideration, Wally. Okay, as far as the uh, Manchester Trail is concerned, uh, we have walked the trail, we have discovered that the bridge that goes over this creek, which is about two-thirds of the way back in the trail, which would lead us to uh, East River Road, is on private property. 
so we cannot use that bridge. So having said that, there's two alternatives. One alternative is to uh, uh, make it into like a, a dead end trail with a circular bench, a circular area going around by the uh, uh, by that river, by that ravine, or else it may make it double back, but uh, or else build a bridge across that ravine, which would cost us a considerable amount of money. So I think we have to think about that a little bit before we decide exactly what we want to do. Myself, I think our, our, our original dream was to extend that trail out to East River Road. That was the original plan. Right. But if we can't do that, then it'll have to be a closed trail. So I, what I'd like to do is uh, I want you to, to think about this very carefully, and at the next meeting we'll decide, make a decision as to what we want to do. Do we want to uh, have the trail dead end at that uh, ravine, or do we want it to double back, and uh, which would uh, which would necessitate additional expense to recut a trail, or just a dead end at the at the ravine? So think about it, and uh, uh, let's decide at the next meeting exactly what we're going to do. Okay. Are there any uh, public comments that anybody wants to make? You know, we'll give them. Yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Craig Pilkington. I live at uh, uh, 27985 South Point. Uh, I was here a couple of meetings ago and uh, broached the issue of incorporating uh, environmental assessments into the process uh, of property acquisition. Uh, and I thought it would be a good idea and that there's now rules that have been promulgated and recently, fairly recently revised that would help protect the township and uh, uh, the township's investment. Okay. Uh, if they were incorporated under uh, what's called an all appropriate increase rule. Well, um, has there been any more discussion about that and changing the process? No, no, there hasn't been. We haven't had any uh, any additional properties that uh, have been consummated. In other words, have been uh, you know that are for sale. There may be something that are some that are for sale, but we haven't completed any negotiations on it. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this: Who has this information? Well, I think the Congressional uh, uh, Federal Register. Where is that the located? EPA, the EPA has got it, and if you'd like, uh, I'm more than happy to send you. Uh, send me an email on it if you want. Uh, there's a number of uh, okay uh, reference points. Is it your concern that the uh, the open spaces? Are not safe. Is that well, no, I think the concern would be that, uh, uh, as a municipality, even though there is some level of impunity, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, that there are some protections in place, uh, these rules were promulgated so that uh, uh, government entities, municipal entities, whatever, if they execute upon these basics. Of, uh, so, uh, of uh, environmental assessments. You basically can claim that we were an innocent party. All right, is it so <coughs> something comes up down the road? Is it your feeling that we should do a, an environmental study of any additional properties that we buy? Yes, prior, prior to acquisition, sure. Okay, all right. Uh, Raleigh, any The assessments that Mr. Pilkington is referring to are common real estate transactions. They are a phase one environmental assessment and then a phase two if the phase one warrants it. Uh, when you do a phase one, it's a preliminary investigation. It basically says, what have we done? What do we know about this property for the last hundred years? And uh, it's a matter of record search. It's not an on-site digging a hole and taking a sample. Uh, only if you find suspicious circumstances on a property would you would you do that? 
but a, a typical virgin land in the middle of a, of a forest without any access roads would probably not warrant anything more than phase one. But a phase one's a good idea. Okay. Now, who would do the phase one? You have an independent contractor do it. Okay, well, if we are, we are the purchaser, then we, being the purchaser, would have to pay for it. If the buyer the, the purchaser is supposed to do the environmental assessment. Okay. You, you, once you put your name on a piece of land, you're responsible for that land mm -hmm. from an environmental standpoint for eternity. So if the township board, say, approves a per, the purchase of a piece of property. It would be subject to an environmental assessment. And they would rightfully ask that that assessment be made public before they agree to buy it. Is that correct? They would have to, they would, they would have to conduct the, the assessment would have to be conducted. And there'd be no reason not to, to make that public, and yes, it's a simple test. Okay. It's not a, the phase one's not real complicated. It, you know, it's not very expensive. Yeah. Okay, okay. Is that right, So if, that, if, it's, a, if it's standard. And if, it's, and if it fails phase one, we won't buy it. Okay. Here. Yeah. So, thank you. So we're all set then. <laughs> well, it makes sense. Okay. But that becomes, if it becomes part of your procedure, so it's an expectation and it's documented. Um, I, I think that just adds to protect the township. Yeah, that's, that's, that's part of the purchase, as, as yes. well as explained, it's part of the purchase procedure. Yes. Okay. That's my two cents. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, now let's, let's talk about the progress for um, the prior month action items. Um, expanding the surveillance of open spaces, the friends of open spaces, and I think we were talking about the last time about putting an article in the channels, asking for volunteers to come forward to be friends of the open spaces. Channels went to print about a week ago. Oh dear, so we're late. So we're late. Yeah, you might not get it in this version. Okay. But you might get it in the spring version. All right, let's it's a perfect time to put it there and give you time to do it. Yeah, let's let's put it together and we'll uh, we'll make sure that it's in the spring edition of the channels. Yeah, I'm speaking in the lead, I'm taking away Leah Slender when I said that. I'm pilot, I apologize, Leah, I forgot you were there. Oh no, I'm sorry. What's that? About the channels already being gone to publish. Oh yeah, well that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I, for, for, forgive me, I, I, I didn't. Not a problem. Is there anything wrong with maybe putting an article on the paper stating that in the spring edition we'll be coming out with a formal request? Uh, we, we have so many communication abilities that there's nothing wrong with putting them in the newspaper, there's nothing wrong with putting them on a township website, uh, but Channels has the best chance of a written publication of getting to the most people. Well, let's, let's make it a point then to put it in the channels in the spring and in the meantime to put a little notice on the website. I was going to say we're going to put it on the website. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll revise the open space and trail guide. Uh, we have not moved on that item because we were working on a special project uh, which we uh, which involves property acquisitions, which we uh, cannot discuss in the open meetings. But this is sure as soon as we get this one issue be behind us, I think Bert, you and I were on tap to uh, begin a draft of that. Yeah, so, and I haven't started. Okay. So let's make this uh, uh, after we get this other issue resolved. Let's make this uh, uh, our number one item is to begin work on that to revise draft. Are there any other items that uh, we want to discuss? Let me I'll start off with uh, Leah. Anything that you wish to put on? No, no, um, no I'm, I'm fine. I just had a note with you with Joe's phone number and everything, so you can give him a call because he really knows about the trails, too. Very good. Joe, anything? I'm good. Oh, and Kurt? Pat? I'm good. Ready? Uh, no, that was nothing really. Um, I just got to find out a place we can go through. Other than that. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Well, I'm going to move on to the next 
Sorry, Scotty, you went for the uh, wood vetting event? Yes. The only reason why we couldn't get one of our local, uh, our, our contract, our uh, blanket order source, TNT, to come in and uh, cut the wood down, and then what you're saying is that the individual come in and yeah. chop it up in small pieces and yeah. carve it away? They don't, uh, we're going to try, try to one, go for one place and I'll tell you next month, next month if we can get it. If we can't, we can't. Okay. Very good. Well, is there anything in just, just a side comment for communications with many folks. I maintain a separate web, uh, web identity for my township official business, and this is official. Uh, Trustee Lally at Gmail is my email account. Okay. Anything that has anything to do with any any function that I am privileged to partic uh, participate in here should go to that account. The other one is my personal account. And you know, it's in you know, a separation of church and state, if you will. So okay. If somebody wants to forward me to see all of those racy things you've talked about in the other space. But I'll make sure I do that I remove your personal email. Well, use my personal email if you wish to send me something personal. But if it's, okay. if it's something you want to be nice, okay. Yeah. Well, your extension. Trusting, trusting Molly at gmail.com. That, that's your email. Do you have an extension on the No, I don't use it. I'll give you my cell phone number. If you like it, Please. anybody can have it. Okay. All right. All right. You're never going to find me here. I, I will check it once every three months. And that's not timely, so okay. I prefer to have people just call me. Right. Yeah. What he does, okay. don't you? <laughs> yeah, I call you. Okay. Talks to my wife all the time. Okay. I talk to a speaker. Well, that's because nobody's home. Okay. Yeah. If, uh, if there's no other comments or discussions, uh, we'll move for uh, adjourning of the uh, open meeting, and we're going to adjourn and go into a closed door session to talk about some property acquisitions. So uh, if there's any uh, no more comments, I move. I move uh, you move to, to go to a closed session? Yes. I second it. We have to ask our, be our guests to leave. <laughs> I Mr. Falkington, Phil I'm the biggest guy here, and I don't want to throw you out. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So, uh, okay. I, I have been. It's run out of better places, one, one, huh? One more place is up in the Pick up an agenda before you leave. <laughs> Take care, huh? Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you for going. Goodbye. The meeting stands adjourned, and we are now going to move to close our session.